Hello, this is Igor with TechWare Labs, and today I will show you all of the modding tools I provided on the website in my guide. First off, we have Gibd. Gibd is a very interesting save editor uh, and that allows you to edit very many things, including your experience level points, general skill points, and other things that I will mention further on in the guide. Secondly, we will be using a cheat compilation by Technojacker from MPGH, and it is from uh, many, many different people that put it together by Technojacker. I'm sorry, a lot of people wrote it, but Technojacker put it together is basically what I'm trying to say. Um, let us start off with Gibt. Uh, Gibt can be found uh, on a link that I've provided in the guide. You should technically download it from his website only. I will not provide a download link for that reason. Um, when you open up Gibt, you will get a uh, folder that has a lot of these files in it and what you're looking for is the one with Ansem Jack in it. You double click it, it's the application file and you open up your save file. It is located in Documents, My Games, Borderlands 2, Willow Game, Save Data. Then you go into the numbers and you open up your save file. When you open it up, you will see that you have a level, an amount of experience for that particular level, general skill points, you have your head, skin, the currency that you possess at that particular moment in time, all the fast travel station that you have visited, your backpack, your bank, and the raw data. Now we will start off with the general tab which uh, has the platform that you're using. I'm on PC so we'll leave it as that. You have your class. Uh, I've never played with it myself but I've uh, always heard from uh, my colleagues especially that when you select Gage or Krieg it usually does not allow you to play those characters. Now the experience level is very simple. You can either go up and down with arrows and then sync the experience to the level that you selected, whatever you choose to. Or you can increase the experience and sync it, or you could just increase the level and then uh, leave it as such. Your skin skill points is whatever skill points you'll have. Uh, I've never figured out what special skill points, but if you do, you're welcome to post a comment on our website about it. Uh, you can select any head you want. But if you choose to select it, you have to remember that when you go to the changing station, you will not have it open. So if you change it, you'll have to go back to the editor. The skin, same thing with the skins as the heads. You'll have to save it, and then you'll have to reopen it through here if you choose to change it. Now the currency is very simple. You have the reserve slots, which I do not recommend touching. And you have the Torx, Serif, Iridium, and the credits. Now the credits have been raised to uh, 10 million, as you can see. The Iridium can go up to 999, but it will only show 99 in gift. Uh, Seraph Crystals is 900, Torg is 900. Fast Travel Stations, I don't think, I've tried it multiple times, it did not work for me, but when you try to, uh, a, uh, be, I believe, enable any of these, it will not work. Now, if it works for you, that's great, it did not work for me. The backpack is really simple, you can either make a weapon, which I don't technically do, because it takes a long time to remember which weapon has which name to it, or looking up the guide with all of the names for particular types of, uh, you know, the balance, the manufacturer, the grade, the body, the grip, the barrel, the sight. You have to know uh, all of the words for that. You could just paste the code that you find online, or and, and then sync the weapon to your level. As this is, say, let's leave that at 10, and then you press sync all, it goes back to 61, or 261. Now the bank is really simple, you could take an item, you can copy the code from the set item and then paste the code in your bank and now you have the item here just like you copied an item here you copy it from the internet the code would be something along the lines of what I copied here you will copy a certain code that looks just like this from the internet I provided many links very very many links with a lot of weapons there I will provide even more if asked this is the code that you will copy and then you press paste code and the item appears uh, I don't believe that's the item I copied no, there it is. Okay, right here. Now, very simple, understandable, raw data. This is where it gets a little complicated. I've messed with a couple of things here and there, but uh, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, I'd recommend saving a lot or making a copy files of all of your saves that you have. Now, mission playthrough, mission playthrough data. Uh, you can realize which one you're on by the, having the active mission that you're in. Then you go to mission data. And these are all the missions that you have done. You can, the funny part, or the good part about having being in this menu is being able to go to complete, 
complete, complete, complete, complete, complete, active can change to complete. Active can change to complete, and active can change to complete, thus resulting in you having no need to do the missions, just run and complete them. Uh, I recommend not leaving them as complete, but instead changing them to, uh, excuse me, to ready to turn in, allowing you to get the experience of the money for it, and the game recognizing that you actually legitimately turned it in yourself. You didn't have to do it, but you did turn it in. Now, whether or not it glitches with the game, I do not know, as I have not technically been uh, through a, uh, beaten the whole game by doing this. I've beaten a couple of missions here and there that take too long and I didn't technically want to beat it because I've played this game on Xbox 360. I've beaten it multiple times here and I have this one saved file that is not corrupt and I can show you all these videos on. Now, let us go ahead and modify my character and see how it looks in the game itself. Uh, let's start off with the head. If you select the trigger pull and then you press, uh, excuse me, save you select the file you want to save it as, you replace it, then you select the character. And there's the new head. And there's the new head. Same thing with the colors. Alrighty, so GIMPT, very self-explanatory, very easy to use. We'll leave it as that. Now, the fun part, and really gets interesting, mostly, is using the game's... It says I don't have the downloadable contact installed, which I don't believe is right, because I paid for the season pass, but let us just go ahead and jump into this. Ah, very fun part. Um, let me go ahead and uh, get to a little bit further down. What do I, what am I having? Ah, my favorite. Okay, let me show you a couple of things here. Now, we have the infinite ammo, no reload script. We have the new re no reload mods and everything. Huh. Let me try this again, because it doesn't seem to be registering that the fact that I've opened the game close this one out, run this, enable this, scripts, there we go, that's blink mod for you. Now the button I'm pressing for you guys is Q. The best way to do it is with the weapon. What it does is it teleports to the location of the bullet, the last location of the bullet. Now the fun part of doing this is getting to objects that you do not, wouldn't normally be able to get to. Now, moving on from that, turning off blink mod, loot control and scalar number is allows you to loot uh, objects easier. Enemy swapper is very, very simple to use. You generate the list of enemies that are in your map, and you swap them for different enemies. Loot, uh... This is the loot exploder. It ex it makes your. This is the base item pool, and it, it's actually a very interesting mod. Uh, I don't believe I have any enemies around here, but let's look. I haven't actually done Oasis myself yet. This is one of their newer DLCs that I haven't I haven't touched any of the DLCs to be honest with you. Uh, don't know. Let me increase my chances of getting there faster. Here we go. What is wrong with me? Ah, there we go. There is the explosion of items. Now to make this even more interesting is you can go into the change the drop rate of every character. Alrighty, sorry for that. Um, here is the continuation of my video. Uh, we stopped at me being increasing the drop rates. It is right here, item rarity drop mod. Uh, missed it, forgot how to find it. 
here we go, we go in here, we open up the modifier, and we can either make it all legendary, very rare, rare, uncommon, common, or very uncommon. Or we can make the presets, legendary is 10 times more likely, skin drop rates, item drop rates, everything. And then you just change the float value. And you freeze those values, you resume, and you find killable enemies. And by killable, I mean anything that's squishy. And here we go. As you can see, items drop like crazy. What we could do is increase the legendaries to drop and everything else not to drop. Then freeze those values and find more enemies to kill. Whoops, don't want to do that. There we go. Okay, here's the uh... Ah, we have Dimensional. We have Nova Star, Wasp. Clearly you can see the drop rate mods works well. Now you could, if you'll notice, use the Evil Smasher mod, but it's completely useless now as the Evil Smasher is completely useless after it's been fixed, as you could say. Um, further on we have the easiest to control infinite ammo, main skill time freezer, mission time, fake more player difficulty mod, super speed and jump, all you have to do is select it and increase the values. Fixed slot machine to have rigged value, torque value, usage counter. And you can do everything here, really everything. If you really want me to go delve any further into this, you're welcome to ask, I'll make another video. But for now, we will end it here. If you have any other questions, or you want anything answered, or you have any requests, please ask in the comments below. Thank you very much, and have a great evening.